Today, I'm going to be going over modern day 4K television tech so that you know what to look for in your next TV purchase and also so you can understand all the terms that I use in my Vizio P-Series Quantum X review. This video is mostly made as a companion for that review, which is why I refer to the P75QXH1 Vizio QLED TV often. So let's get nerdy. There's a stupid amount of tech inside the Vizio P-Series Quantum X along with any other top-of-the-line TV on the market currently, and if you were anything like me when you were reading through the spec sheet, you had no idea what any of it meant. Thankfully, I'm going to quickly summarize what everything means, so even if you don't end up picking this guy up, you still know what you are looking for and what you want in your next TV. We'll be going over what comes included on this TV, which includes the following QLED and quantum dots, the three lighting types, which are direct lit, edge lit, full array local dimming, the pro gaming engine that supports HDMI, VRR, and FreeSeq Premium, along with four different types of HDR, which include HLG, HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision, summing it up with the IQ Ultra processor with some other things sprinkled in. There are two major types of televisions on the market right now. The first is quantum light emitting diode, which is aka QLED, and the second is organic light emitting diode, aka OLED. The main differences between them are the QLED TVs are going to be brighter, have better color accuracy, and will stay that way longer than OLEDs. However, OLEDs have unlimited contrast ratio, allowing you to have perfect blacks with bright whites as they are self-emissive, which allows them to turn on and off every single pixel. Due to this, they use less energy and are thinner. There are also some other differences as well, but that's not what this video is about, so we're going to be moving on. The quantum part of QLED refers to quantum dots, which are all about color vibrancy and enable access to more than a billion colors. One estimate reported that it increases the color gamut of an LCD display by 50%. This increases range of colors, makes them come across as more vivid and intense, giving you that pop that makes you go, wow. It also allows these colors to remain accurate even at peak brightness and will provide consistent color expression throughout its entire operating life. Whereas on an OLED, colors may wash out during scenes that require full brightness by up to 30% and over time will also lose their color accuracy due to their organic nature. There is new tech to help prevent this from happening and give it a longer lifespan, but it can still be an issue. Jumping completely into the rabbit hole, quantum dots are human-made nanocrystals that are around 2 to 10 nanometers, which is crazy small, that have a semiconductor property. When a nanocrystal, aka quantum dot, is hit with light, which is usually a blue LED light in the most common photoluminescent version, it will absorb one wavelength of light and convert it into another, such as a monochromatic red, green, or blue. The size of the nanocrystal decides what wavelength of light it emits, with larger dots going towards red, and as they get smaller, they go towards green. These quantum dots are applied to a sheet of film that is placed in front of the LED backlight in the same place that the phosphorus layer used to go in old LCD displays. So the LED backlight will turn on, then pass its light through the quantum dot sheet, which then passes through the LCD display stack, which then multiplies the overall amount of colors it's able to reproduce so that we get a wider and more saturated range of colors that otherwise would not be possible with regular LED slash LCD technology, which is pretty freaking epic. This tech is what gives these television sets the 10-bit panel needed for HDR and are also the main reason why 4K TVs look so awesome, far more so than the pixel amount. Next are the lighting types. There are three types, direct lit, edge lit, and full array. Direct lit uses several rows of LEDs behind the entire surface of the screen and are incapable of using local dimming. This is the worst of the three. Next is edge lit, which sometimes uses local dimming and sometimes doesn't. This is when LEDs are placed around the edge of the TV and point towards the center to light up an image. This is the second best. Local dimming just means that it can reduce slash turn off sections of the LEDs at a time. Last is full array local dimming, which is what comes with the Vizio P75 QXH1 TV and is the best you can get. With this, LEDs are new numerous and placed in large sectors slash zones and spread throughout the back of the TV so they can dim or turn off certain sectors slash zones to provide finer, more targeted, deeper, darker, and richer images to try and get closer to OLED level blacks. This TV comes with 480 zones, which is more than most of the others on the market currently. It can also reach a max brightness of 2,800 nits on a small area of the screen or 800 nits for the entire screen, which is close or beyond what most displays on the market are currently 
currently capable of. This increase in color gamut and brightness is what makes an image seem more realistic and pop. Next is the Pro Gaming Engine, which can automatically turn on game mode, which allows Xbox, PS4, and PC to be more responsive by lowering input lag to one millisecond allegedly, by turning off some of its features. Inside this pro game engine is support for HDMI variable refresh rate, aka VRR, and AMD FreeSync Premium. HDMI VRR comes standard with any HDMI 2.1 port. This guy supports four of these, but only two of them can reach 120 hertz. VRR reduces latency and when used correctly can eliminate jutter and frames slash screen tearing for more fluid and detailed gameplay. This allows frames to be delivered as fast as possible while also keeping them in sync by pairing the gaming console slash PC and monitor slash TV together. As stutter and frame slash screen tearing occurs when a rendered frame doesn't have enough time to fully render out before getting sent to the screen, so it needs to send a repeat frame or partially rendered frame to fix itself, which causes tearing slash juddering. The varial part of this is that games are always changing frames per second, FPS, depending on what is happening on the screen. Since the console and the screen are talking to each other, they can adjust together. This guy supports VRR between 48 hertz and 120 hertz, which means if everything is set up correctly, meaning stuff is turned on and supported on the system and on the TV, anything between 48 FPS, aka hertz, and 120 FPS, aka hertz, isn't going to tear or stutter and will have reduced latency, which can make low frame rate games feel like high frame rate games and reduce overall latency. This is complicated tech, so I'm going to pretty much leave it there as there is a ton of asterisks with this entire section. So everything that I said isn't like for sure fact, because like I said, the settings and blah, 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 blah. But if you're interested in hearing more about that, I recommend checking out Battle Nonsense, which I will link his channel in the description below where he goes way more in depth with all of this stuff. FreeSync Premium is the step up from HDMI VRR and is freeware that needs to go through a minor certification process that ensures that the screen has at least 120 hertz at 1920 by 1080p or higher, has low frame rate compensation, LFC, and low latency. Nearly the exact same thing, but on Nvidia side instead of AMD side, is G-Sync compatible, which this TV does not support. The step up from this is FreeSync Premium Pro, which is a more rigorous certification process. Then the step up from that is G-Sync Premium and G-Sync Ultimate HDR, which requires actual hardware to be placed inside of the monitor or the TV that does a bunch of work but adds cost to the product along with an even more rigorous certification process. However, these particular TVs slash monitors, I don't know if it's actually in any TVs yet, but these monitors are some of the best that you can possibly get just due to that certification process. QA and everything like that is a lot, usually a lot better on them than they are on other lesser monitors that don't have that tech. Not necessarily lesser in the anyway. Currently, the PS5 supports HDMI VRR, but not FreeSync, but hopefully that certification will come in the future, whereas all Xboxes support FreeSync with the Xbox Series X, which is the newest console because their naming structure is idiotic, supporting FreeSync between 30 and 120 frames per second. But on this TV, it would still only support it between 48 hertz and 120 hertz because that's its operating range on this guy. Phew! We are at the end of that one. That one was quite the doozy. Moving on to standard definition range, aka SDR, can only go up to 100 to 500 nits and supports 16.7 million colors. Whereas current dynamic range, HDR, supports up to 4,000 nits with 1.07 billion colors. This is a huge jump. Last up is the HDR standards. Thankfully, this TV supports all of them where not all TVs currently do support all of them. For example, Samsung, for some reason, only supports the HDR10 codec and not Dolby Vision. Anyways, these HDR standards include HLG, HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. HDR10 was the original HDR and is an open standard. Nearly all 4K content and capable devices, at the very least, support or have HDR10. To get this certification, you need to hit 4.2.0 color subsampling, 10-bit color depth, and 1.07 billion colors, and BT2020 color space. It applies metadata by a scene-by-scene -scene basis with a maximum of 1,000 nits, 
HDR10 Plus mixes things up by being a royalty-free standard and increases the metadata to be dynamic, allowing them to set color and brightness levels frame by frame while supporting 4,000 nits of brightness. Dolby Vision, on the other hand, is the best of all of them, but comes at a premium as it is a proprietary device, which means they have to pay for it and sometimes requires a chip to actually be installed. This is not the case so much anymore as most of it is turned into software, but still your best content does come with a chip. It also supports dynamic metadata by a frame by frame basis, supports 12 bit color depth, up from 10-bit, which no TVs are currently capable of yet, goes up to 68.7 billion colors from 1.07 billion colors, and can produce 10,000 nits of peak brightness from 4,000 nits, which makes it more future-proof and likely will be the overall winner of the HDR war. So if you're planning on having a TV for many years, I would want one that has Dolby Vision in it. HLG is often the forgotten orphan child. It combines SDR and HDR into one signal, this is mostly for live broadcasts that when they get sent out, if you have an HDR device, it will be an HDR, and if you don't have it, it will be an SDR, which is 8-bit, 16.7 million colors. To get any of these to work correctly, you need to have everything in the chain working. So one, you need a TV that supports the HDR format. Two, a product that supports that HDR format, whether that be a Blu-ray player, a streaming device, or an application. Three, the item, which means the TV show, the movie, etc., needs to be mastered in whatever that HDR range is. And four, the correct settings need to be on the correct option, as sometimes Dolby Vision needs to be checked or turned on, or other times it automatically switches. And this will vary from device to device. All of this tech is powered by the IQ Ultra processor, which takes all of this stuff and makes it try to work together along with firmware, which is honestly where a lot of things fall apart with this TV and a lot of other modern day televisions as the software that's involved in this is incredibly complex. It has improved since launch but still has a long way to go before it's solid and is the only thing that is technically holding this TV back. And by this TV, I mean the Vizio back, as not everything is working as intended or handshaking correctly, which is causing bugs and aberrant behavior, which also appears to be the case with any of these other modern day TVs, as there's a lot of tech and to get them to work well with each other takes a lot of work. But now that you know just an inkling of the sheer complexity that is involved with modern day televisions, you can be a bit more forgiving of their downsides as making all this tech work together is exceedingly difficult. This Ultra IQ processor sports a 64 bit image, one gigahertz, GPU and onboard AI with machine learning abilities. This also works to upscale SDR slash HD video to 4K. If you are interested in how this tech is actually implemented with the P75QXH1, along with the overall build quality, the smart features, its performance, any current issues, and the issues that have been fixed, I highly recommend watching my review on this TV, which is linked in the description below and at the end of this video. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. Peace out, and God bless.